I have this scroll wheel out of a mouse, it's a rotary encoder or quadrature encoder and I'm going to use this to drive the duty cycle of a pulse width modulated signal. So I'm going to connect it to this launchpad and then when I uh, increase or turn right on the encoder I want to have a big duty cycle, when I decrease I want to have a small or a narrow duty cycle. I'm not going to do any bit banging here, I'm going to use the peripherals that are available on the Hercules microcontroller uh, to decode the rotary encoder signal, they have an EQEP module, a quadrat quadrature uh, encoder peripheral and for the duty cycle and the PWM they have an ETPWM module. I'm going to write some software to talk to uh, both modules, so uh, a little driver that takes the signal of the encoder and translates that in a numerical value and then uh, drive the PWM part with that value. To make life easy for myself I embed my documentation in my project. So I make a folder here that I exclude from build uh, by using this menu option and every reference manual or uh, explanation that I need I just paste into that folder. I don't paste the document itself, I paste the link and you do that by right clicking on that folder uh, saying new file then in the advanced button say link to a file in the file system you browse to it it doesn't take any additional disk space but you have direct access uh, to all these documents and you can use them without switching applications for the Hercules family we configure the drivers in Halcogen and it has an easy navigation page where you can go to the different peripherals and configure them uh, but the first thing we have to do is enable them so we go to the driver enable and because we're using quadrature encoding and PWM, those are the drivers that we're enabling here. Uh, I have selected uh, QEP2 because that one is broken out to my launchpad and it's easy to get to its pins and the PWM driver. I've also enabled the serial communication driver because I'm going to log some uh, information in my program to a console. And then we'll go to the different blocks and uh, configure them. Um, the first one we're going to do is the quadrature encoder. So I click here and because we're using the second one, the one that's broken out, I'm going to this tab. And uh, you can just take over the settings here. We'll go from 0 to 38 uh, hexadecimal. Uh, we enable software in initialization. So we will, in th at the beginning of our program, set the initial value. It By default it will take the one that uh, uh, we have entered here. You can also change the value here and then do software initialization and it will take that. Makes sense if you want to start in a middle position. But in my case I want to start from 0 and then go up to 38. And that's about it for this tab. So we don't have to do more in the EQEP module. The next one we'll do is the PWM module. I'm enabling PWM1 and let's have a look at the configuration I've done. I'm only using one pin uh, PWMA and uh, I have left the clock settings as they are but I want a 1 megahertz signal so I have given here uh, a period of 1000 nanoseconds a duty cycle of 0 to start with you could change this here and then uh, uh, it would start from that duty cycle but my, both my quadru quadrature encoder and my PWM will start with 0 I have set the delay to 0 I don't have a use for that delay in my scenario I just want the proper PWM signal coming out starting with zero duty cycle so effectively a zero volt signal coming out of the module at the startup. And the last one is that serial monitor so let's have a look at how we configure that. We can go via the block diagram here click on the serial communication one. I haven't changed anything on any of these tabs but here you can see the settings that are going to be used so we'll have a 9600 baud rate. Uh, with two stop bits, eight length and no parity. And that's all the configuration we do. We can now go to uh, Code Composer Studio and start writing our code. And I have broken down my logic in two modules. So instead of having all the code in my main file, I have broken out rotary and PWM logic in their own very little modules. So you will only see a few functions in each of these uh, modules always an initialization function and then something to either get or set a value because we're reading from the encoder it's a get here 
and in the PWM we are setting the signal so you will find also an initializer but then a set function. In my main module the only thing that I'll be doing is then read the rotary encoder and set PWM signal if it has changed. Let's have a look at the initialization of that rotary encoder, what's happening there. Not a lot. Uh, I have made a boolean here, wrap, which m lets me control that I want to uh, cross the upper and the lower limit. So if I set wrap to true and you go beyond the highest limit of uh, my settings in halogen, it would go to zero and wrap over. The other way around, if you reach zero and uh, you keep on turning, it will go to the highest value and, and back. So you have an encoder that wraps around the upper and the lower limit. If you set it to false, it will stop at the highest, highest or lowest limit and it will not go any further. The only thing that's happening in my initialization is that I apply all those settings that are done in halogen. No magic here, no real abstraction or anything else. It's just uh, getting those initializations uh, done so that they don't appear in the main uh, function. And then the second function I have is to get the position of that rotary encoder. I'm just using the API that is also generated by halogen to get at those values. You can hear that I've turned on my oscilloscope. We're going to do some real probing here. So everything is set up. I have connected my rotary encoder to the launch pad. Uh, the code is running in debug mode. I have opened a terminal here that's connected to the uh, SCI of my launch pad with the same settings as we've seen in Halcogen. And it's waiting for me to turn uh, the rotator. So I'm going to turn right now and we should see an increase. We should suddenly see that there is a pulse width modulated signal coming on on the oscilloscope screen and you can see the duty cycle here of 25 percent and in the logging screen we can see that we have a setting of 19 on the rotary encoder i'm going to increase some more we've gone to 41 and the duty cycle is 55 here um, the frequency is as we have set it one megahertz so everything is going fine i'm going to go to the maximum and you'll see that it stops working uh, when that maximum is set uh, I said it was close to 60 it was 56 and whatever I do here it's not going to increase but when I turn left it will go down up to zero where the PWM signal disappears and I can't go lower anymore if I would have turned on that flag that says wrap it would have gone to the maximum PWM so that's how you connect a rotary encoder and the PWM module on a Hercules launchpad you can use that PWM signal to drive any load that can be regulated with a varying duty cycle. Changing that frequency here from 1 MHz uh, to something else can be done in code, but you can also set that in halogen. So if you change that, uh, that period in halogen to something else than the 1000 nanoseconds that we did, it will be reflected in the real world. Your PWM signal will pick up that frequency. Again, you can do that in code, you can do that uh, via configuration, whatever you like. So the exercise is finished. We've managed to connect that rotary encoder here to the PWM output of my launchpad. Uh, not that difficult, just do the right settings in Halcogen, glue everything together in Code Composer Studio, compile and test. I'm using 1 MHz in my example because this is going to be the test bed to drive a gallium nitride half bridge. So I haven't done this for the purpose of this video or just to try out those two blocks. It's going to be a real test bed, so it's going to be a real world application.